Have you ever wondered why your favorite anime show has never gotten a second season? Or maybe you're a manga reader and you always wondered why your favorite manga has never gotten an anime adaptation. Both of these things have to do with the relationship between anime and manga and how they make money in the industry. Most of you watching this video are probably familiar with anime and manga, but you may not be familiar with its history. Manga was first and it started off in 6th or 7th century Japan as short form illustrated comics. The style of Japanese comics changed later on after being inspired by western comics, uh, comics and they went on to add specific shading styles and speech bubbles. Anime got its start in and after World War II and it's often talked about alongside anime and manga's grandfather or OG Osamu Tezuka who created the first anime TV series Tetsuan Atomu also known as Astro Boy in the West and really cemented anime's place in history and in culture. This is important to know because it's important to know the relationship between manga and anime. Knowing that manga came first and that anime came second, you would think that manga would be the end all be all like result for companies and licen licensing companies and money making and all that good stuff. But it's questionable. In Japan, when manga sells out or when it sells a lot of copies, that means that it's most likely going to get an animated series. And after that manga has become an anime, it's most likely that it'll create this cycle where people who watch the anime want to read the manga. However, if you live in the West or more, more specifically in the US, it seems like anime increases manga sales because most of the time a lot of people know about anime um, and are more likely to watch an anime than they are to buy the manga except for in more recent years where manga sales in the US have been increasing and becoming one of the most notable uh, purchases in the graphic novel comic book area. For example, manga sales in Japan bring in an estimated amount of 448.3 billion yen or approximately 3.93 billion US dollars, according to 2016 data by AGPEA. Whereas manga sales in the US bring in about $1 billion from the $26 billion that all of the comic book and graphic novel total market brings in. Now let's talk about anime and how much it makes. Anime actually makes $19 billion annually. Now if you compare that to manga's $3.93 billion in Japan and $1 billion in the US, and give or take you know, a couple billion for worldwide release, yeah, it still doesn't add up as much as anime. The biggest way that anime makes its money is through anime merchandise. According to a report by GrandviewResearch.com, anime merchandise rivaled internet distribution of anime for major growth of the industry. This means that physical clothing and items and licensed items helped promote and spread the awareness of anime um, and people's influence and connection to it more than internet distribution or you know talking about on social media and uh, platforms putting out content online which is kind of crazy if you think about it because the internet is very very influential A lot of really popular anime merchandise includes video games, clothing, figurines, CDs, DVDs, plushies, and all kinds of stuff. If you've been to Japan or if you've just looked online for, you know, your favorite anime stuff, you've probably seen a ton of merch for very certain series, uh, really, really popular series specifically. In Japan, there's tons and tons of stuff you could buy that's Evangelion related that literally could sustain life. Like you, you could live off of it. You could have a shelter, you can go on a train, you can eat ramen, you can just, you can drink. There's so many different merchandise and uh, collaborations with major brands and things like that that has made anime money. And it's not just exclusive to Evangelion either. There's definitely a ton of Dragon Ball Z merchandise um, and collaborations as well as more recently Demon Slayer and My Hero Academia have so, so many different collaborations that you can uh, purchase and buy and consume all of their merchandise. Let's talk about the answer for this question. Is anime just marketing for manga? Well, like this video so you can find out faster. Sorry, I just had to throw that in there. Please like this video if you're enjoying it so far. It was it took a lot of research to actually look this up and a lot of time and effort. But I really liked I really liked learning more about the anime and manga industries. So yeah, let's talk about the answer. The answer is mostly yes, but somewhat no. <laughs> so anime can act as a advertisement um, or a way to promote a manga or a series so that it can become more popular. However, as we saw, anime makes a lot more money than the manga industry does. 
but oftentimes, in Japan specifically, manga is usually the determining factor of if a series will get an anime adaptation, which is kind of different from how we view it in the US because a lot more people are more familiar with anime than they are manga. And after watching an anime, they, then they kind of see the influence and, the, uh, and have the notion to go and look for or read the manga. Which has been changing in recent years, you know, with the advent of uh, Shonen Jump uh, having like a $2 a month subscription, which is nothing, and Comixology and all these other kind of subscription-based uh, manga and graphic novel reading services, but still is not a nearly as prominent as it is in Japan. Anime adaptations tend to be or act as rewards for the fans for having sold out of a manga series and, you know, continuing its popularity. And even though manga sales are a key part of the industry, anime continues to grow and make money beyond that. And this includes series that, that have canon manga to reference and series that are totally off the grid, made up um, without any canon reference. The real money of the anime industry comes from global reach uh, spreading out and many, many different avenues worldwide for income from selling of anime merchandise and licenses to various companies worldwide. As well as, of course, like I said before, selling a plethora of merchandise, literally every single thing you could ever imagine. All the anime t-shirts, all the plushies, all that good stuff. But also movie tickets. Um, for example, the Demon Slayer movie made so, so much money. I mean, it's good to know that anime isn't just marketing for manga. Anime really does stand on its own and is making and paving a ways for itself, even with the um, influence of manga and, you know, with manga coming first and usually being the uh, reference for a lot of anime. Anime still by itself is dominating. But the sad truth is the reason that you're probably never going to get a second season of your favorite anime, even though it has a manga, is because it's just not making that much money. <laughs> If a series isn't profitable enough to, uh, you know, sell a lot of merch and sell a lot of items um, and get people to continue to consume it, not only like the content but the physical merchandise, then it's probably not going to get many more adaptations. Also, even though anime is becoming a worldwide phenomenon, phenomenon, phenomena, phenomena. The Japanese market still has the biggest influence on anime, which makes you know the most sense because a lot, like most of the sales are in Japan still. Um, we think that we have a lot of influence here in the US and in other parts of the world, but it's still quite small compared to the influence that people in Japan have over you know, anime adaptations in the market of anime and manga. But there are still ways to support your favorite series, no matter where you are in the world. Of course, watching things legally is a huge, huge benefit because it shows recorded watch time. Recorded watch time helps companies and licensing companies know that an anime is doing successful in that country. And if the anime is doing successful worldwide, then they might continue that series uh, for several more seasons or even or give it a movie or you know several adaptations. Popularity online is also a big thing. So like talking about your favorite series um, with your friends online, posting on social media and like showing an interest in it is good because it shows that not only are you sharing that information with other people so that other people are getting into um, whatever series that you are um, and promoting that series more, it helps companies know which series are worth investing in and in worth investing merchandise in uh, because people might be looking for certain merchandise now that a series is really popular and talked about online a lot. And of course, paying for official merchandise, you know, go to your local Hot Topic store, check out High Plan online and get some cool merch stuff and all kinds of stuff uh, is available licensed online. You can always check a store online or in person and see if it's licensed uh, by a certain company. Um, usually it's through US licensing like Funimation, but sometimes it's just through a collaboration with the anime and you can always tell that by the tags and official information on websites. Another way you can show your support for your favorite anime and your possible favorite anime creator on YouTube which I hope is me, but I'm not, you know, I, if it's not, it's okay. But if you do, you can go on to my Patreon and become a patron. I have exclusive stuff and videos that come out on there, as well as just more posts, more behind the scenes stuff, more information, like, like what's on my bookshelf and other things that are coming to my office, as well as just more behind the scenes of how I go and create these videos and what you can learn from them. Make sure to check out the link in my description to join 
the exclusive anime tea group and become an anime friend. Thank you so much for watching this video. I had a blast making it. I hope to see you in the next one and I hope you have a good day. Bye.